Hi, this is Justin from Polygo. In this video, we will learn how to prepare and orient a scan file for reverse engineering using our Point Kit and Extract 3D plugin for SolidWorks. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, you can find the mesh file in the link below. If you don't already have Point Kit installed, you can sign up for free and get the download link at our website, shop.polygo.com. With Point Kit scan installed, we can go ahead and load our model. Under the toolbar, click on the load file icon, select your mesh, and open. And now we can begin our reverse engineering setup. The first step I like to take with my mesh data is to ensure that the mesh data is clean when it goes into my CAD program. The easiest way to do this is to select the mesh, and then under the toolbar, click the Finalize button. This will open up your finalization options. To preserve detail, we can select Maximize Detail, we can choose a smooth mesh reconstruction, and we can choose the level of resolution that we need for the mesh. I'll choose standard, and then we can set our trim level. Setting our trim level to one or higher will get rid of any data that is generated by the mesh reconstruction pro process. And if you want a watertight mesh, we can set the trim level to zero, which will go ahead and fill in all of these holes that you have in your data. Since this mesh is fairly complete, I will go ahead and set my trim level to zero. I do like to have a watertight mesh um, when I work with it in my reverse engineering applications in CAD programs. Uh, it's not always necessary, but it does seem to behave a bit better at times. I will disable hole filling and mesh smoothing, and my cluster removal will be set to one. Cluster removal will make sure that anything that's outside of my largest cluster will be eliminated, such as this data here. I can go ahead and click Finalize. Once the finalization process is complete, the program will generate a copy of our mesh data, which has been finalized. Since our trim level was set to zero, you can see that these holes were filled and some of these small holes were filled as well. Depending on your application, you may not want to use a trim level of zero to preserve uh, more detail in these holes. But for this application, um, it's not necessary to really preserve all the bolt hole details. So I'm happy with this result and we can continue to um, the next step, which is setting up our coordinate system to align with the basis coordinates of our CAD programs. In our next step, uh, we'd like to set up the coordinate system to align with the base planes of our CAD program. And uh, to illustrate why this is important, I have exported the mesh file as an STL to import into SolidWorks um, using Extract 3D. You can use any CAD program you'd like or any reverse engineering software you'd like. Um, but for this example, I'll be using Polyga's SolidWorks plugin. And there it is. And you can see that everything's imported in a very awkward to use orientation. This will make it very difficult to extract the 2D information that you need for your sketches um, when tracing the, the mesh, the mesh profiles. So what we would like to do is orient maybe this face and another flat feature so that the coordinate system aligns with our base planes in SOLIDWORKS. To do this, we can go to Tools, Geometry Tools, and select Plane. We can use this uh, pick three plus points, so we can go ahead and select some points that we want to use for our first plane. We can go ahead and create that plane, and we can go ahead and create another plane off a flat face, such as these ones up here. We can go ahead and create that plane, we can go ahead and rename our planes just so we can keep track of them. I will call this front. I will call this plane top. I'll also go ahead and make a copy of my front plane so that I can move that copy to somewhere in the center of our mesh here. So I can select my front copy. I can rename this to center. And I can move this along half of the width of our body here, which is about 30C 
six millimeters. This guarantees that I have two parallel planes, uh, which I can work with. I can then go ahead and use that center plane. I, I'll create a point off that center plane at its geometric center. I can select which plane I would like to use, which is the center plane, click. And we've generated a point at the center of our center plane. I will then generate two more points to give uh, directions to my X and Y axes uh, for my coordinate system. To do this, we can create a point using point to plane, and we'll project this point onto the top plane and the front plane. You can control click to select multiple entities in your geometry list here. Uh, and this point will be projected onto those two. You can click create, and we've generated two points all orthogonal to that center point. We can then go to axis and we can pick three existing points. The first point you pick will be your center point. This will be the origin of your coordinate system. And then your X axis and your Y axis. And your Z axis will be automatically created in the middle of those points. I'll go ahead and hide the planes just to give you a clearer visual of the coordinate system that we have created. And we can create. Now the final step in setting your coordinate system to be the same as the axis you've just created, the coordinate system you've just created, um, is to right click and apply to either the selected mesh or apply to something in the mesh list that we have over here. Um, just to illustrate what is happening here, I will go ahead and draw the axis of our mesh currently. And you can see that is located somewhere far away. We can go back to our geometry list tab. We can select the axis, coordinate axis, and apply to selected. I have my mesh selected, and we can see that our local axis has now repositioned itself to where we've created our coordinate system. From here, we can go ahead and export this as your STL and import it into our CAD program. One more point to note, 3D scans tend to have a lot more data than you actually need to work with. So what we can do, um, we can look at the information of our mesh. We have about 2 million vertices. Um, this file is roughly 100 megabytes right now. We don't need that much data um, for a reverse engineering process. It'll slow down your CAD program. It'll be a lot clunkier to work with. What we can do is we can go to Edit, Decimate, and we can preserve the detail by clicking by selecting Maximize Detail Decimation option. And we can reduce this mesh to about 10% of what it is. We can go ahead and click Decimate. And once decimation is complete, you'll see we're left with 10% of the data we had before. Going back to SOLIDWORKS, I'll use Extract 3D to import our edited mesh file with new coordinate system. Now we can see that the mesh aligns nicely with our base planes. This makes everything a lot easier to, to reverse engineer and go from mesh to solid, as I've done here. And that concludes this point kit tutorial on setting up for reverse engineering. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment or get in touch with us at www.polygon.com contact. To learn more about PointKit, you can follow the links in the description. As PointKit develops, we plan to release more tutorial videos. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and follow our socials to get updates on new features and tutorials. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.